So if why something needs to be rebuilt is for us to acknowledge the fact that it's something that's broken or it's something that is severely damaged. And that is exactly why we're doing this video because the relationship that we have with ourselves is severely damaged right now. Like it's to the point that girl, you probably have gone through a breakup with yourself and you didn't even realize it because the relationship that you have with yourself is that damaged. If this is your very first time here, my name is Tony, and I do a lot of content here on YouTube about self-growth, self-care, self-love, just overall personal development, shifting the mindset and what it truly means to be on a glow up journey. So if that is content that you enjoy, stick around. I'm not going to tell you to hit the subscribe button because you'll hit that regardless of if I tell you to or if I don't tell you to. You'll get a sense of the vibes here. And if you're feeling the vibes, then you already know what to do today i want to spend a little bit of time prioritizing this rebuilding season like let's just lay it out let's go through some talking points let's just kind of map out our approach to what this rebuilding season may look like now keeping that in mind this is not a step-by-step -step format okay this is not that i don't want you guys to think oh if i follow every single tip that tony gave on her video that i'm going to reach a better relationship with myself no uh-uh Mm -mm. No, this is just a way for us to come together. These are just some notes, some talking points that I thought about, some ways that I myself am changing to really rebuild this relationship with myself. So just keep that in mind. We will spend the maximum amount of time that we have to spare. We will spend it all on nurturing other relationships, but we never spend that amount of time on nurturing the relationship. The one relationship that you've been in since you came into the world. This is the one person that you've always had a relationship with. And that is the relationship with yourself. I don't care whether you are in your 20s, your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. It does not matter. The relationship that you have with yourself is the most important human to human relationship that you are going to have and i had to specify it like that because i don't know about you but the most important relationship overall for me is my relationship with god okay i wanted to make sure that i specified that because i know somebody's gonna be like well how are you gonna say the relationship with yourself is the most important one so that's why i said human to human. So yes, the relationship that you have with yourself is more important than your relationship with your mom, more important than the relationship that you have with your dad, with your brothers, sisters, spouses, you know, wife, husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, even more important than the relationship that you have with your kids. It's more important because reasons like the deeper, the understanding of the value that you have within yourself means the deeper of uh, understanding that you have of the person on the receiving end. The love, or excuse me, unconditional love. If you show yourself internally unconditional love, then externally you'll be able to give unconditional love to everyone else. A strong commitment to yourself means what? That you can make a strong commitment to another person. Everything, everything, everything is affected by the relationship that we have with ourselves. Every single person who comes in contact with you is affected by the relationship that you have with yourself. But also your quality of life is affected, which brings me into my next talking point, which is do you want to have basic satisfaction or do you want to have more? The relationship that you have with yourself could very well be the difference between you living a mediocre life or you living a life where you just feel elated every time you open your eyes. <laughs> this particular relationship, the relationship that you have with yourself is in fact necessary to living a life you desire. So for me personally, I desire things like peace. I desire love. I desire happiness. I desire balance. I desire contentment. I desire stability. So all of these qualities that I just named off, not one of them comes from an outside source. Like I can't get peace from somebody else. Okay. Peace has to come from within. I can't get happiness from somebody else. Now somebody may do something to make me happy, a situation or something like that, but I have to have true happiness from within. So 
I have to make sure that I have a quality relationship with myself to make sure that I am able to evoke all of these qualities and all of these emotions by myself. Your life isn't what you want it to be. Maybe you don't have peace. You don't have happiness. You don't have balance. You don't have contentment. You don't have stability. You don't have any of these things. You're miserable and you're just filled with negativity and you're filled with darkness. Maybe that's what you have. Okay. At what point are you going to fix it? At what point are you going to say, I want to change my circumstances. I want to change the relationship that I have with myself. Reality is love. Nobody's on the way to fix you. Okay. Let's just be totally honest. There is nobody on the way to fix you. You have to fix yourself. You have to be harsh with yourself. You have to be honest with yourself. You have to tell yourself the truth. Nobody's coming to fix you. So if you want to change these internal qualities that you may have, where you don't have that happiness, you don't have that, you know, peace, that stability, and all you are is a big old blob of negativity, you have to be the one to fix that. If you want to know whether or not you need to heal the relationship that you have with yourself, ask yourself, a couple of questions and it's it's not a lot of questions i promise you don't have to ask yourself 20 and 30 different questions i can't i guarantee you ask yourself five good questions and if you answer yes to two of those questions out of the five you probably need to work on the relationship that you have with yourself so i wrote down a couple of questions first one is negative self-talk consuming you yes or no do you criticize yourself to the point that it inflicts mental anguish? Number three, do you feel like you're your own safe space? Are you disappointed in yourself or are you proud at how far you've come? Do you love yourself or do you tolerate yourself? As I was preparing these questions for this video, I was answering them in my mind and I was like, oh my gosh, I answered yes to almost all five questions. I'm not perfect, you guys. And I always tell you guys, I make content about things that I'm currently going through, or I make content about things that I have already been through. And I feel like building a relationship with yourself is going to be something that we're always working on. Like, it doesn't matter what season of life you are in, you're constantly going to work on the relationship that you have with yourself. Especially now, I know what I wanna do career-wise. I know the position that I wanna put my family in. I, there are things and goals that I have in place. And so now, it, let me put it like this. Let me backtrack. When I was in my 20s, I did not have this kind of clarity. Now in my 30s, I have all the clarity. I have all of my goals that I want to hit. But it's like now I've put all of this pressure onto myself because I do know exactly what I want to do. Well, it just takes some tweaking to the relationship that I have with myself. I know that I dealt with my way, I, I dealt with my way, I dealt with myself a certain way in my 20s when I didn't have this clarity in my life. Now I need to understand how to deal with myself at this point in my life, now that I have clarity, now that I have goals, now that I know what I want to accomplish in my life. I just need to tweak the way of, tweak the relationship that I have, tweak how I talk to myself, tweak how I, deal with my feelings, deal with my emotions. Those are the things that I want to start fine tuning so that I can become my own safe space. This is the moment where we need to rewrite the story. I think it's easy for us to forget the fact that we can change the narrative at any moment that we feel like it. You can change the narrative. You can change the whole trajectory of your life with one decision. Like truly, if you sit and think about all of the choices that you have and all of the decisions that you made today, just one of those decisions being slightly different than what you made could have like truly changed the whole course of what you may have traveled, changed the whole journey of the road that you may have traveled. So with that being said, you don't have to be that person that is consumed with negativity. You don't have to be that person that does not have peace in their life, contentment, stability, balance. You don't have to choose to be that person anymore. You can choose to say, okay, I'm going to fix myself and I'm going to rewrite my story by working on the relationship that you have with yourself. So there are a couple 
tips that I want to give. Again, these are just ways of looking at how to get started. I know a lot of people hear that phrase and they're like, well, how do I build a relationship with myself? What does that even mean? Well, just like you build a relationship when you're dating somebody or you build a relationship with your best friend over the years, you're going to do the same thing with yourself. You have to build trust in that relationship with your best friend. You have to build honesty with your uh, in that relationship with your best friend. You have to build that that safe space, that space where you feel like you can tell that person anything. You're gonna build that same thing with yourself. So like I said, these are just ways that you can go about starting that process. If you want to follow them, follow them. But if you do not, like I said, I'm just leaving them here, leaving them here because these are things that I have tried doing for myself. So first thing, this is like a daily statement that you can make to yourself if you want to. Like I said, it's, it's not a requirement, but here it is. I am not required to be perfect, but I am required to do my best. This is a big one for me because again, I put so much pressure on myself that I lose my mind a lot of the times. And I have to realize as long as I'm doing my best, I kind of actually stole that a little bit from the four agreements. If you have read that book, the fourth agreement is to do your best. So that's why I said, I am not required to be perfect, but I am required to do my best. As long as I know that I'm doing my best, I am putting my best daily effort. I'm doing the best that I can. That is all that matters. And that is going to show yourself some self-compassion because a lot of the times we get down on ourselves, we start, you know, we, we use ourselves as a punching bag almost because we're so upset. We don't feel like we're moving. We don't feel like we're doing enough. So it's going to help you give yourself that self-compassion to say, look, I'm working the best that I can. If building the relationship with myself is the goal right now, I'm doing my best every single day at building that relationship. Second thing is I want us to love on failure, okay? Love on failure because the thing about it is we are all going to fail. Again, it takes that pressure off. It takes that feeling of disappointment off. Like there have been times where I literally feel, have felt, past tense, I have felt sick to my stomach about myself because I'm like, you're, you're just, you're nothing. Like you are trash. You could be better. You this, and I literally have talked to myself like that. So welcoming the failure and just loving on it, loving on the fact that it is a part of your process. If you begin to love on failure, you'll begin to live life in a much smoother, more happy way, because you know that it's a part of the process. We look at failure like it's the end all be all. And it's not. Loving on failure actually gives us the ability to heal from a crushed spirit. Like I am the one who crushes my spirit. You're the one who crushes your spirit. Nobody else does that. Nobody else can even ever hold that title because it is. it just cannot happen. It won't ever happen. When you have built yourself strong enough, words don't affect you. Processes don't affect you. Failing at something does not affect you. So again, crushing your own spirit, that that's something, or crush, having a crushed spirit, that is something that you do to yourself. Because again, you are not in a healthy mindset. Your relationship with yourself is broken and damaged and you're not cognitive enough and conscious enough to be able to catch these things when they're happening, catching these thoughts when they're happening. Number three on the list is I want you to start giving yourself a high five for the micro wins. I have a really good example too. Just today, my son has struggled with his handwriting, his penmanship. It has some, some difficulties. So anyway, he came home today and he was so excited. He's like, mom, my handwriting is getting so much better. Do you want to see it? I'm like, yeah, of course. So he managed to write a full page and each one of his sentences stayed on the line. That was a big deal. But to everybody else, that seems like something so small. I gave him a high five. I was like, oh my gosh, buddy, like this is excellent work. And it made me think because I knew I was prepping the notes for this video. It made me think like, why come I can't give myself a high five? Like I, again, I'm so hard on myself. I beat myself up so bad. Why can't I give myself a high five? I want you to ask yourself, have you done something recently? 
even if it was something minor, did you give yourself a high five for it? Did you acknowledge it? That is the biggest thing. It's about acknowledging the small wins. So it's going to teach us to start showing up for ourselves the way that we show up for other people because I don't know where the blockage is, but we can show up for other people and support their small wins and their big wins. But for us, we have an issue with celebrating those small wins. That is a part of the relationship with yourself and that is something that you wanna start doing for yourself regularly. Number four on my list is one layer at a time, okay? The self-care is one layer. The self-affirming habits is one layer. Becoming honest with yourself is one layer. Weaning away from being overly critical is one layer. Trusting yourself is one layer. This is not an overnight process. And that is probably to be said about a lot of things in life. It's not an overnight process. I told you at the beginning, the relationship that you have with yourself is for your whole entire life. From the time you are born until the time you take your last breath, you are going to be in a relationship with yourself. So deciding to peel back these layers at the appropriate time, whatever is going to help you build the relationship better with yourself, follow that process, but just understand that it takes time and don't force yourself to hurry up through each layer if you really wanna have a healthy relationship with yourself. And number five on my list is to challenge yourself to see you for who you are. There's a lot of things that we don't like about ourselves, a lot of things that we just don't even wanna acknowledge because we hate it. So instead of acknowledging what we see, we run from the truth because we think that we can avoid it. The truth always comes to life, my friend. <laughs> it's funny because I was sitting and I was thinking about it from this perspective. Most of us have probably gone through a similar situation. We have broken up with somebody because they lied to us and they were unfaithful. But you are in a relationship with yourself and you lie to yourself on a regular basis. How is it that we get to the point where we almost wanna spit fire on somebody for lying to us but we lie to ourselves on a regular basis. How is that okay? It's not okay. That comes from running from the truth. You know these things about yourself. We all know our flaws. We all know our bad qualities. We all know the things that are just horrible about ourselves, but we don't wanna acknowledge it. We would rather put the blame on somebody else. I'm just at a point in life where I'm done placing the blame. I will do whatever internal work I need to do so that I can ensure that I am my best, my best self so that I can be my best self to everybody around me. I have to be my best self to be a better wife. I have to be my best self to be a better mother to my three sons. That is my responsibility. So I'm not running from that anymore. If the truth is going to set me free, baby, then I need the truth. <laughs> so again, with these tips, you can follow them. You cannot follow them. Choice is yours. I just wanted to give you guys some examples to again, show you where to start in this process of healing and rebuilding that relationship that you have with yourself. These are things that I am very much so using for myself. And again, I hope that they can help you as well. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. I know I missed last week and I am so sad. I made a post on my community board and I told you guys I was really sad, but I am learning that I have to give myself grace. I am one person, I have a lot going on. And just like I have a lot going on externally with you know just household duties, mom duties, all of that, I have a lot going on internally. Not bad, but there's just a lot that I'm trying to work on about myself. So I have to work on those things so that I can do these videos and try to help y'all out too. But again, I just, I. It, I, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm stumbling over my words at this point and I don't know why. <laughs> but anyway, that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. And yeah, I will see you guys on the next one. So till next time, love. <laughs>